so here we have the full arrangement of my track Cosmonaut on Perfecto Black. And in this three-part deconstruction series, I'm going to talk you through some of the techniques that I've used making this track. Now, I really like working in Logic 10 2 actually, but in this case here, we are in Ableton Live 9. And I usually start my tracks with programming the beats. So let's skip back a bit in the track to this section here, where we have mainly just the drums and the bass line. Zoom in a bit more. So here we have the kick drum. And there are two layers to this kick drum. The first one here is just a, a sample placed on an audio track, uh, processed with a couple of plugins. The first one here is a compressor. And I've used this compressor to bring out the initial attack of this kick drum a bit. But if I bypass it, it sounds a little bit more woolly. And with a setting like this, with a fairly slow attack of around 20 milliseconds here in this example and a ratio of 3.5 to 1, you bring out the initials sort of transients of that kick and give it a bit more of a spike at the front. It's a fairly mild threshold here, nothing too drastic but it helps to bring this kick drum out in the mix. And then the next plugin here is an EQ8. And I often like working with a setting like this where I roll off the lowest frequencies here below 30 Hertz. And instead here with the second band push the frequencies where they matter really. Often around sort of 60, 70 Hertz. Can the A and B that again. And it just gives that kick drum a bit more weight. Uh, there's uh, another EQ here that I'm using just as a low cut occasionally in the arrangement. Uh, it's automated. So for example, here in the intro of the track, we have that sort of low cut kick drum. And then here at bar 17, it kicks in. Bypassed here now. So let's uh, look at the second layer to this kick drum, which is this one here. That's a sine wave coming from an operator. And uh, that's how you can create that sort of really heavy tonal kick drum combination of a, a sample kick drum with a sine wave underneath. So it's just a simple sine wave here, just using one of the oscillators. Let's solo that actually. As you can see, I've um, slowed the attack. Originally, it looked like this, but you want to make the attack a bit slower, probably sort of around 70, 80 milliseconds to make room for the sampled kick drum. So that's coming through first, giving it the initial kick and then the sine wave sort of adds the weight underneath. You also want to make sure that the release time is not set to zero. Get a click like this. So you got to give it uh, just a sort of few milliseconds to get rid of that click. And uh, it's also very important, uh, obviously, since this uh, kick drum is playing a note, that it's in key with your track. So you can play the sine wave on your keyboard. In this example here, we are in the key of E. So that's why the sine wave layer of the kick drum is uh, also playing the root note of E. So this next plugin here is Ableton's Overdrive. Would be too subby and too clean without it. And you don't want uh, that bit of distortion on the sine wave. If you go more extreme, you get a sort of typical electro house, progressive house kick drum that you hear a lot these days. But we are in a kind of sort of tech trance track, so go a little bit more subtle on the distortion amount. I think like this. So around 40% sounds good. Then we have 
another EQ rolling of the frequencies below 43 hertz in this example would be too subby, too bassy otherwise. And then here at the end of the chain we've got another compressor sidechaining the sine wave against the sampled kick drum. So like this we've got ourselves a really solid kick and it's where we're spending quite a bit of time on the kick because that's one of the key elements in a dance track. But let's skip forward a bit in the arrangement where there's more stuff happening. And I show you the other elements that we have in the drums department. So here we've got a tom solo there. And I'm using the uh, Nicky Romero kick drum synthesizer by Sonic Academy, which in itself is a really good plugin that you can use to generate really good kick drums. In this example, though, I'm using it as a tom. Another good thing is that you can obviously tune this to the key of your track. So again, this is tuned to E. For a kick drum, you would go an octave lower and go to E1 here. But for a tom, I'm on the E2. And then here we've got another EQ. Rolling off the lowest frequencies and poking out the mids a bit. And then together with the kick drum, get this sort of rhythm. Then next we've got a clap, fairly standard clap, and a percussion loop. And then here we've got the hi-hats and the right cymbal on the groove. Let's uh, concentrate on that group here for now. There's two reasons why I like uh, grouping my hi-hats. So we've got a right symbol here on every downbeat. Just a, a sample on an audio track, but with a fairly steep low cut here above 1000 hertz. Then we've got an open hi-hat kind of loop and another hi-hat loop like this, more like a closed hi-hat. Uh, this one here is pan slightly to the right or well, this one is panned slightly to the left, and that's how you can create a sort of really nice uh, and wide stereo hi-hat pattern. The right symbol here being in the middle. And uh, as you can see, I'm uh, using quite a lot of low cut on <laughs> almost everything, but that's how you can really declutter your mix. Like uh, on this hi-hat here, for example, if you would bypass this, even though you might not be able to hear it necessarily, but you can literally see there are some really troublesome low frequencies here on this hi-hat loop. And then just by doing this on not only the hi-hats, but anything like uh, percussion or claps, you can really tidy up the sound of your mix. Now here we've got the actual group with the three elements. And one reason why I'm grouping these is because with this EQ, for example, I can affect all three elements simultaneously. And then using this band here, I can, for example, boost the high frequencies, give them a bit more sparkle. But I'm not going too extreme because the uh, mastering EQ will make these brighter still. But I really like this uh, plugin here in Ableton. You find that here under the saturator menu, warm up highs, which makes these hi hats sound a little less digital and gives it that more sort of tube uh, tape saturation kind of sound. Works really well, very subtle effect, but it's really nice on hi hats. And the other reason why I'm grouping these hi hats is because I can sidechain all three of them here with a compressor against the kick drum and give them more drive like that. Now the last element that I'm using as part of the drums is white noise. You could use the operator as a white noise generator. In this example here, it's a sample actually. But I like using white noise stabs like this to basically set accents in the beat, perhaps every four or eight bars in the track. Basically, instead of crash cymbals, I find them kind of a bit too old school. You can make them more stereo here using a ping pong delay. 
gives them a bit more stereo depth and again sidechain compression on that too. So that's the drums in my track Cosmonaut. In part two we cover the bass line and the synth stabs. <laughs> 